Well, you know, if you mean redefine in terms of content, there's a continuous process of re refreshing the content. If, if you mean redefining in terms of the structure, probably there can be some restructuring done where some of the basic courses can be delivered through a, uh, what you call a, a electronic medium. But on the other hand, the campus experience and some part of it being a campus experience is probably essential to an MBA program. So yeah, we can redefine and play around in the edges by saying, okay, there's a certain amount of content which can be delivered very well through electronic means, let's do that. There's another part of it, like a basic accounting or something. And then there's other parts of the content which requires you to have a class discussion and that will continue to be delivered face to face. In terms of the basic structure, I think the content keeps getting to refresh. But remember, the most important job of an MBA program is the selection process. After that comes the processing part, right? And most of the time people are focused on the processing part. They don't realize that the most important part is the selection process. Right? Really it's the selection, is the interaction that students have with each other which makes them ready for business. You know? And often we think it's what's in the classroom that defines the MBA program. What's in the classroom is an important and integral part of an MBA program but it's really not the whole experience and not even perhaps the majority of the experience. As most students will tell you, what they learn most is from other students and from the group projects they do together and all those things. And that's what makes it. So it's really a community that you have to have. And the smart and the, the, sele, the selection process says, how smart are the other people who are going to be teaching you in the class going to be? And so really that's where the MBA program is. So do I see any radical redefinition unlike many people? I personally don't. So I do see the ability to deliver the basic content clearly or electronically mm -hmm. in the future. Right. So today the, the business environment is changing so rapidly. So do you think uh, MBA students are you know um, able to cope with uh, rather what is being offered in B school are they able to cope with this fast changing business environment? Uh, yeah, I don't think that the again <laughs> what you learn in the business school may be or may not be relevant even for what you do at your job. What you learn in the business schools is a vocabulary, what you learn in the business schools is an awareness, what you learn is about how to behave in corporate settings. After that is really what you learn on the job that is going to determine your success. I don't think what you learn in the business school is going to determine your failure or success in the business. So I don't, I personally don't see even if there is a disconnect to be of any great consequence. So you think it just equips them with the skill to it equips them with the language, it equips them with a way of thinking, it equips them with how do you behave in a, in a business environment, it equips them with how do you manage uh, people without authority. And those are the things that they take with them. Right. So, um, you, you taught at B-School all over the world, so how does an Indian MBA program compare? So the Indian, listen, in terms of the textbooks and books and knowledge, that is not as global. It right? doesn't matter whether you go in India or you go in Timbuktu, you learn the same thing. So the, the content part is not very difficult. What different is the part that I spoke about earlier, the interaction you have with your fellow students. In the Indian B school, like I am in Dor or I am in Dabad or I am in Bengal, all the interaction you'll have with people who are pretty similar to you, other Indian students. Right. If you go to an international school in America, 30% of the students will be from other countries. If you go to a, to a leading school in uh, Europe, 70% of the students will be from another country or 80% of the students will be from another country. So the global mindset which you will find and the, and the understanding of different cultures and today business is becoming more and more global and multicultural. The workforce is becoming more and more. So perhaps the international schools are better equipped to launch students into the multicultural work site compared to the Indian students. Okay. But you see now with a lot of interest in India and China and you see Indian B schools also making it to the top? Uh, it's going to be at least a two decade story. There's no chance of any Indian B school getting Indian B schools hitting and becoming respected research institution is at least two decades away. Right. Except for Indian School of Business. Okay. ISB is the only exception right. where they actually have an active research program. Right. So uh, one last question, Nirmalaya. You, you, you've been teaching MBA courses across the world. So how are you now using those skills in your corporate job? The skills basically which I use are the skills that came from my consulting practice rather than from my classroom. It came from looking at cases, looking at uh, problems of companies and trying to come up with alternative solutions. My job is not to do anything in the company. So I have a job which is the head of strategy, which doesn't really require me to execute. It requires me to increase the imagination of the group. And that's really my job. My job is to ask questions, which in any case I was doing in the classroom, I was doing in the case studies, I was doing in my consulting practice. So my job hasn't really changed that much.